Well, hi, everyone. So glad that you could join us today. I hope you've got your coffee with you. So we're just going to sit and visit, and I hope you'll join our conversation. Today, I have with me my, my guest, a new friend, Sheila Arrington. And Sheila is a licensed and ordained minister. She's a speaker and author. She's also a conference host for the Purposely Designed Women's Conference. It's an annual conference, and this year it's in April. So welcome, Sheila. So glad you joined us. I am so happy to be here, Linda. So tell me, uh, this conference in April, where are you located, first of all, if anyone's wanting to jump in right away? <laughs> right away, it is in um, Arizona, Chandler, okay. Arizona, where the conference will be held. Um, it We have it every year, and it really is just about bringing women together um, to really help wherever they are in their, I call it their purpose walk, the walk that God has designed for them to do, how they help others. And so this year's conference, we have um, Faith Yuri Cho, who is from New Jersey coming. She's the author of Friendship with God, How the Wilderness Draws You Into His Presence. We're so excited about that. We have three tracks for women to join or be a part of. If you are in any type of leadership, we had the lead track. If you are one who wants to be an entrepreneur or you are just newly into starting a business, we had the launch track to help you in your business. And then the final one is that one who, that the track that want, helps you with your spiritual growth, which is the abide track. So you can go to my website, um, Sheila Arrington's Ministries.com and um, find out more about that if you're interested in attending. Okay, so when I post this, we will just, um, I'll just set, set that link at the bottom. Okay. After people can look for you. So that sounds like a good conference. So uh, ladies, you're, you're listening, you check that out. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about your story. You had said that um, you had feelings of rejection as a child, and that can just change our entire trajectory of life. It, it really has. Linda, so unfortunately, my parents um, divorced very um, when I was young, very young, like three and mm. my mother was got was very ill, and we had to go live with um, my father's parents because my mother's parents lived in another state. Um, and that not fully understanding the whole situation, it doesn't matter what the situation is when you're very young and you can't understand, but you do take in the feelings that can come along with something like that. And for me, the feelings of, and because my personality and who I was was still being shaped, mm -hmm. it took on the form of rejection and abandonment. And so throughout that, when you are feeling rejected, there are certain things that also accompany me Re um, rejection, feelings of shame, feelings of unworthiness, feelings of not being good enough or can't do good enough, I say. And um, that all has a, a part to play in uh, my story of coming along with that. Um, that I always makes a felt, that, and that makes a difference of how we see ourselves how we yes. imagine ourselves through others' eyes. Yes. It's not yes. necessarily the truth, but we it's imagine someone's truth. thinking something and, and it's hard to trust people. Right. It was very hard for me to really trust people. I'll just give you a couple of snippets. I remember um, before I um, I say get well, I got well, I would do things like I was a still I, when I um, was a teacher, you know, not really trusting my colleagues 
or I mean, just silly things. Like if they were talking in a group uh, and I would come up and they stop, I, you know, I would imagine that they were talking about me, which is not necessarily true. Yeah. You know, they could have been talking about something that um, was just about them. Yeah. But person who has that, you project that on you. Yeah, self-doubt. Um, other things, um, you would just feel that um, you couldn't, you couldn't, you didn't trust, trust others. You, you thought, or if, um, when I later became a speaker, because I still had that unworthiness, I still had not dealt with the depths of my re rejection and abandonment. I would speak and people would come up to me and say, oh, that was just so wonderful, Sheila. Now, I might not say, no, it wasn't. But in my mind, I would say, no, it wasn't. Because I didn't see it as being me being good enough. Or I would say, if they really know who I was, because you see, in my mind, right. yeah. I felt unworthy. Yeah. I felt good enough. I um, had a lot of shame. I even had roots of bitterness in me. Those things were calling my name. Those things had Sheila written on this. And, right. um, and so you could not even enjoy, you know, a simple compliment. It, it was just, it becomes so rooted and grounded. Another thing that um, comes with that is perfection because you're working to get others approval. Yeah. So you try to do your best. You try to not make mistakes. And, and then because you are a person who has that um, uh, um, perfectionist, um, you know, just uh, personality, you then because you know you're you don't you know you're not perfect so when someone criticizes it's just really when you start unraveling it it's like you're darn if you do you're darn if you don't you know because then well if someone would just give you a suggestion you would take it as something critical criticism yeah couldn't take us so then it really becomes that you you are not teachable. And what does God say? We have to have a teachable spirit. And so it was just, I just really, just really kind of messed up. But I, um, one of the things that I have learned as I've done research and um, study is that with depression and with some of these things we're talking about, we can be, there's something that they call high level um, depression where you can, high functioning depression, where you can function at a very, very high level still, but still have all of these things happening inside of you. Um, and I, I, I was, I had, depression, I had anxiety, you know, I was just a basket case. And the beauty of God is this. He knew all that about me and yet he still called me into ministry. Yeah. <laughs> but when we go through the word of God and we see some of the um our heroes and the characters we meet, we begin to say, you know what, God, you don't look for the perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good <laughs> but you just take us as we are because you know the end of the story yeah yeah and it just is amazing and that's just the beauty that as I was able to unravel through mm. getting help and tell my whole story because the shame in me, even as an adult. Now, this is just kind of different. As an adult, I was afraid and ashamed to tell people that I came from a divorced family. 
I mean, that's not anything like a rocket science secret of some kind to tell people in this society that we live today. But that's where I was. Oh, they're not going to accept me, you know. And so all of this baggage that was just leading me through just uh, really a pathway to destruction if God had not been in my life. But the grace and beauty of God is that he knew the day was come that I just would fall totally apart. And you know what? Sometimes those falling aparts that we do, they're a good thing because it helps us get the help that we need. And allow him to put us back together. Yes. Yeah. It's like the potter. Yeah. And he has the clay. And you know, he just kind of says, not, not right, not right, not right. I'm gonna you need, I'm gonna put you back on the wheel. <laughs> and I'm going to shape and continue to mold you. And maybe some pieces will fall. That's okay. The good the bad might fall, but he's gonna press and push and yeah. shape and mold. Got a little lopsided over there. <laughs> yeah. 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 And when I understood that, I can remember the day of falling apart, just crying, Lord. And, you know, I was even angry at him. Mm -hmm. How do you let this happen to me? Yeah. And then it was like he was saying, I just felt it in my spirit. I was waiting for you to come to oh, this point. Yeah. And he does. He does wait for us. Yes. Yeah. Because now we can start putting things together the way they should be. Yeah. And I want to give a just a little um, shout out to women who are listening. Because some in the Christian community think that we should, therapy does not belong in for Christians that we have to get. Therapy is okay. And in, he's very okay. <laughs> very okay. Yeah. And I believe we've bought a lie of the enemy. Just like God allows doctors to help with our physical bodies. Therapists and psychologists can help us lead us to the right thinking and perspective and things that are murky and muddy in our life. Yeah. And there's all different kinds of therapists. So yes, just I have and, and, keep, therapist. and keep trying to like, if, if you don't fit the first one, then go and try again to someone else. Try again. Yeah. And, and look for a Christian. Um, who's going to have the same belief system. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because that's what I looked for. And the first thing I talked, because I was, you know, not, oh, should I do this? Or, mm -hmm. and I told her right away, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm a woman of God. And I am I'm a minister. I'm just kind of messed up right now, but I need someone who is going to understand and you believe in God, uh, and know that God, even through what you're talking or sharing with me or um, um, giving me um, information, that it's coming through the lens of, of what the Bible says. Yes. So, and I was, and she, she was fabulous. Oh, that's good. That's good that you found somebody. And yes, you know, because so many people walk away from the ministry because they 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 see the, their flaws and their problems and um either they can go one way or the other they can you know keep try to minister out of that which is not ministering out of wholeness the best you can yeah. so you might, you can hurt people so Sheila, did you find that as as a minister, um, knowing you needed some counsel, um, 
and you were doubting yourself, did you find it difficult to help others at the same time? You know, um, when the the beauty of God is when I was really at that fragile point, because I would be considered more in the area as a speaker or an evangelist and not one who has a church. That period of time, I and it was all God's design. I wasn't out speaking a lot. You know, the ministry that I did do, I would do, um, God used me a lot in my school with other faculty members. So they mm -hmm. knew that I was a woman of God and they knew that they could come and talk to me and share with me. And I pretty much, because I was so busy keeping my stuff to myself, I would just minister um, what the word would say. You yeah. know, I um, so I was able to um, really kind of keeping away from doing any other damage. I, I and God didn't. I was, as they say, kind of out there on on a, a lot of stage presence in that time of my life. I was not, and I I needed to be healed because. Like I said, when roots of bitterness do come up, you, what does it say? The root of bitterness defiles, can defile many. So he, he really, and some of that bitterness was even toward God because I didn't understand a lot that was going on. And um, even though I, so this is, this is very interesting. So even when you're going through that and you, know you're all messed up, but you still know that you're called. And now I can look back with 2020 vision, right? Because it's in the past and I can see yeah. the, I can see how it was uh, all unfolded. But then I'm saying, why aren't you opening doors for me to speak? You know, so I'm getting upset with him and, you know, and I'm feeling like you're rejecting me too. Until I came to that place of just falling all apart. Yeah. And then it was time to get the help that I needed to be able to come into the places where God has me today. And I, and there are, you know, we're never perfect as we know, we all still have stuff that we have that we're working through, but praise God, I am not working at things as I used to. Now I can see more of the plan of God in my life. Yeah. I um I have really worked to believe what the word says and not believe that it lies of the enemy that would tell me you're unworthy, you're this, you're you're shameful, you're all of these things. And I work to renew my mind according to what God says about me. God says, I'm wonderful. I'm the apple of his eye. Yes. I'm part of a royal priesthood. And not just me, but those of you who might be listening to this, the same goes for you. You're the apple of his eye. He couldn't love you any more today than he could love you a thousand years for because he is love and you have all of his love. Yeah, it doesn't matter what we do, he still loves us. Yes. Yep. He loves us. And I, then I was able to understand that. I had a um a picture of standing in a hallway, and on the left hand side was a closed door, and it was a wooden door, and it was the past. You know what that represents our past. And standing in the hallway with, with a bunch of luggage. And, and in the right hand side, there was other doors, but they were they were still closed. But the luggage was the baggage. <laughs> and there's healing in the hallway. And we can't we can't go into the new until we've got rid of what's in, what's in the hallway. And so oh, there's good. like there's like the the healing and the hidden when he hides us because we're not ready and then right. there's, there's the and I think like I think all of us have a backpack at some point little bits yes. of stuff 
Yes. Um, some of us have the whole luggage set on wheels, all of it, right? Yes. Oh. <laughs> you know, all of it. And so it's it's just a matter of of surrendering and and throwing throwing. You know, he'll throw his covering over and just yeah. wheel it off on the conveyor belt, and that's that. And then we can go forward. But there's healing in the hallway. So when you were talking about um, he, there's there's time of healing. Um, I, what I was hearing was that like healing and he hides us till we're ready yes and you know what you can read in the word when um, christ was talking to his disciples sometimes and he would be talking about he was going to be leaving them and the word says but it was hidden from them that, that they would not understand because even though he begins to share some things the whole thing, he might, he hides it from us because he knows we can't handle it. It's, you know, yeah. whatever. Um, and we're not ready for it, you know? And yeah. so I, I, you'll see that same line and it was hid from them, you know, throughout the scriptures. So God does that in our lives. Yeah. It's his timing. It's his timing. Yeah. And you know what? The word also says that at the right time, he will do it. I love that scripture. And he says, and you shall not lack any good thing for those who trust and honor him. So it's, you know, God is not trying to keep something from us because he wants to keep something from us. He only he only does good. You know, he only does good. And um, that is one of the takeaways that I hope people will um, understand that from your brokenness, God will create, he'll put you on that potter's wheel. And he'll create a beautiful sculpture for you, of your life. Yeah, and I really feel like there's there's some there's some people listening today that they've been waiting for answers. They've been waiting for the next step. They've been waiting for that open door, and mm -hmm. and God's with us. He's yeah. he's with you, and and it's in His timing. And I like I I've taught on. Um, being in the waiting room of God before, because mm. I've been in that way. And it is not a it. time. Yeah. It's not a time to that you're sitting idle. You're still engaged. It's not like, okay, I'm waiting for God. What <laughs> you can look at. Sorry, that just sounded funny. <laughs> yes, you know, but it, but people do that. Oh, you sure. might not it's... even be conscious that you're doing that, but you we do that. I'm just thinking of the last time of being in a waiting room and, and everyone's on their phone and every, you know, going, just scrolling through and, and preoccupied and not focused on anything. You know? Right. Right. And then sometimes you're, he's said, you know, it's like, he's, you're in my waiting room because I'm waiting for you to do the last thing I told you. <laughs> Isn't that true? <laughs> yes. Or you're in the waiting room because I need you to come closer to yes. me. And, and God reveals himself. See, there are treasures in the waiting room. If we would just look at it from a different perspective. Oh, that's good. If we would say, oh, I'm waiting. God, to unveil this. I'm going to take more time to just get to know him better. I'm going to um, take time to really see if I went through the things that I've heard from him in the past, uh, doing that little self, we always have to do, I always say, you have to do a self analysis. Can okay? you, you know, check your boxes. Yep. Stay close to God because even what, when the, um, when the Israelites were in the waiting room or going through the wilderness, Around the mountain again. 
around the mountain again. But what? Did God leave him? No, there was a there was a cloud by day there. If that cloud moved, time to move. If it stood, you stayed and you did life yeah. until it moved. And I took care of you. I fed you every day. I made sure that, that your clothing didn't even, even though you grew, the clothes grew with you. I mean, uh, miracles after miracles after miracles. And what if we can get grasp that for our timeline? Yep. His, while we're waiting. Yeah, his we're provision is with us. That promise. Yeah, his provision is with us and he knows what we need to prepare yes. to move. Yes. And when it's time, he will do it. Mm -hmm. And so it took me years. I could say even over a decade to really come into that. And can I say every time I'm waiting, I can just do it with joyful glee? <laughs> no, I, you know, I have to preach to myself. I have to, Sheila, just like David, has to encourage herself in the Lord. Yeah. You know? And we all have to because we're flesh. And he knows that about us. So how did, so at the point of, um, you had the rejection, you had the symptoms of how you reacted. So how did you come out of that? How I came out after therapy and doing, um, dealing with, because my mother had passed just um, to the, the, the I'm going to just, because a lot happened, but I'm going to tell you um, the last few years where I really felt that um, past years, maybe I've been here almost six years in Arizona. When I first got here, it was like a new work that was being done within me because God knew he was going to open up the doors wide here in Arizona. I did not come here for ministry. I came here because my husband loves to golf. And I just, I didn't know what ministry was going to look like. I was yeah. obeying God. He said, do this for your husband. Little did I know that because your ministry is not in Minnesota. It is in Arizona. I did not know that. But what he started to do, he started having, you know, God is so, he's so wonderful. I started having dreams about my mother. And in the dream, I could never find her. Oh, I had 13 dreams about my mom. And you couldn't find her in any of them. I could not find her. And I got to the point, I said, God, what is this? And I was, and at that time, I was really working on my book. And I was sharing about rejection and I was sharing about abandonment and all of that. And God was saying, it's time to let's go deep into the feelings that you really have about your mother. And so he took me through just unpacking my own heart. And I had bitterness toward her. I had anger toward her. I didn't, even as an adult, that happened a long time ago. It's so interesting. Um, and one of the things was just because before she got her life together, um, she made some mistakes, but, you know, who doesn't mm -hmm. make mistakes? This is after the divorce of my father. But and to make it short, that is really when I begin to, even after the therapy a while ago, over 10 years ago, um, there were pieces that were lodged and hidden in my heart yet. And that is really where I, through writing and through journaling, through mm -hmm. praying, through going through a process of forgiveness mm -hmm. yep. because until you are able to forgive you are still jailed you are still in that prison cell yeah 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 and so when that is really without going through a long story of all the other things it was god dealing with me to let's go down deep and he brought a story to me that happened. I was a little girl, real quick, a little girl, and I was playing, and I got glass cut, a cut. And there was a piece of glass that 
was literally lodged in my foot, but it had um, the skin, layers and layers and layers of skin had grown over it. And my stepmother was playing with my feet and she touched that spot. And I, and she said, what is, that? so she took me to the doctor. And at that time, you know, Dr. Brown, he didn't do, you know, he didn't just cut and put in a, um, you know, something to numb, numb the pain. They just did, you know, layer after layer. And it took, I went to the doctor, he would go down, he said, there, there's a piece of glass in there. And he would take as much as this little girl could stand and open it up, then come back, open it up. And then he finally got, but he had oh, to go through layers. Awful. <laughs> awful. And God, that's what God was showing me. He showed, he brought that to my mind about that. You remember going to Dr. Brown and you had that glass in your foot and Dr. Brown had to keep, and it hurt. It hurt. Oh yeah. And sometimes because we don't want the hurt, we allow the skin to um, just scab uh -huh. over our heart, uh -huh. and our heart till it gets so hardened. Yeah. It will take God to help us get through. And that's where I had hidden my bitterness and my anger toward my mother. So the glass was a was a reflection of the pain from your mom that right. you, your body had grown layers to protect yourself. Yes. Yes. Wow. But if it was touched, it hurt. Yes, it would. Wow. So that is really, and we th went through that. Um, I wrote a lot of stuff in my book that had not yet been, it wasn't published, that after I forgave my mom, I thought I would not there are some things that I have to share, but I don't, I share it now in a different light because mm -hmm. I would, as that hurt little girl, I would, you know, I would, I would not, my mother would end up being a woman of God who trained me in things of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I took those things out that weren't that pleasing because I was healed now. I did yep. not need to, but he had me go through the process, write it all out, get it out, get it out, get it out. Oh, there's a lot to be said about journaling. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We and can, a lot of times it's for our own good. Oh, and, and throw the journal out when we're done. But there's a lot, a lot of healing can happen in a journal. Yes. Yeah. So once I got through that, you know, now I can talk about it. I could share, I could share freely. Yes, you know, my parents were divorced. I could share, yes, you know, I was full of shame. Yes, I had a lot of pride. Yes, I did things wrong. You know, you yeah. get free because he <laughs> needs us to be free to tell our stories. Yeah. Yeah, they and help somebody else. There's a lot of you power. Can't tell in your story if you ain't free. No, and there's a lot of power in our stories. There's a lot of power in his story within us. Yes. Yeah. What he does for us, what yeah. he's doing for us. It's it's his story, his his living testament that's in us that we're, yes. we're sharing, and and that's the story that will heal other people. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Sheila, do you have any final words to encourage the women? Or anyone, actually? That... Yes. You know, my hope for you today is that you will know that if you are in a place of struggle, of any of these things or anything, first of all, you're not alone in it because sometimes the enemy likes to tell us, you know, you're the only one dealing with this. And that is mm -hmm. not true. And I want you to walk away knowing that God sees you, he hears you, and he is for you. And that you, I pray that you will press in to God to deal with and share with and just cry out to him and trust that he will. He hears you. 
He will rescue you. He's already rescued us. But what he's going to do is he's going to show you your way, your exit plan into freedom, your exit plan into being the perfect person that he has purpose for you to be before the foundations of the earth. He knew you. Yeah. He called you by name. He put everything that you need to be successful and to live out the purpose that he designed for you. So don't let any of these things hijack your purpose hijack your relationship with your father. He's waiting for you. His arms are open wide. He has a smile on his face and I can just see the glistening of his eyes looking at you. He loves you. Daughter or son, he's waiting for you to just say, Father God, here I am. That's what I have to say to you. Your God, your Father, your Lord, Jesus, is there for you right now. You don't have to wait. Right now, you can call upon his name. And I know because I know him, he'll answer you. That's what I have. God bless you. Oh, very good. Thank you so much, Sheila, for the encouragement and bringing hope to so many people. And yeah, he does set the captives free <laughs> into, into the purpose that he's created. Yeah. Thank you so much. And mm -hmm. thanks for joining us, everyone. And we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.